All right, let's first of all start with the eclipse weather for tonight. Will we be able to see the lunar eclipse uh, during the overnight hours? Well, first of all, the eclipse begins actually right around midnight. That's called the penumbral uh, shadow casting itself over the moon, but we won't be able to see that. The actual eclipse itself begins when the umbra or the main shadow of the earth falls upon the moon and that starts at 1:10 in the morning eastern time and then the moon will be totally eclipsed and this is where we're going to see the blood moon with between 226 to 331 about an hour and six minutes hour and five minutes of total eclipse time during that time again between 226 and uh, 331 the moon should appear a blood red color, a dull blood red color. It won't be very bright at all because it's mostly in the Earth's shadow. And then it becomes uh, uh, out of the shadow after 331. And by 447 in the morning, the eclipse will be totally over. And it looks like most of the country will be able to see the eclipse for tonight. Looking at the um, uh, forecast models, uh, for us, we should see uh, mostly clear weather conditions across our area. Most of the country is going to have some issues with seeing the eclipse, particularly out in the western states and the northern states, and even the mid-Atlantic coastal states could have issues viewing the eclipse for tonight. But here in our area, I do expect to see breaks in the clouds becoming actually mostly fair. Uh, this is the forecast for 2 o'clock in the morning. Here's a better forecast right here, and it shows generally fair weather across our region. Let's keep our fingers crossed that this is right. Uh, so we'll be able to see the uh, total e eclipse of the moon here in coastal Georgia and South Carolina. All right, with that being said, the weather is the main event right now. And I wanna look at the jet stream first of all, because uh, this is a very strong wave in the jet stream. And this is gonna affect just about the entire country as it marches eastward, propagates from the uh, western uh, portion of the country into the um, uh, eastern portion of the country. Uh, this wave right here will be continuing to move off in our general direction. All right, let's take a look at some of the uh, advisories, first of all, across the country. And, most of the middle portion of the nation at the moment, this is Thursday, March the 13th, having high wind advisories. And over here in the mountains, there's winter storm watches and warnings and advisories in effect. And that goes from the Rocky Mountains over into the Sierra Nevadas, up into the Olympic Mountains, and uh, a lot of, uh, and the Cascades, uh, a lot of... Uh, um, uh, snow warnings, winter storm warnings, in effect, we're expecting a possibility up to a foot of snow up in the Sierra Nevadas, even up in the higher terrains, uh, in the uh, uh, east of the Los Angeles area into uh, north of San Diego. Expect to see snow in the mountains out there. But what over here, nothing going on right now. And uh, looking at the advisories, uh, first of all, for the uh, eastern portion of the country, the uh, satellite imagery, first of all, showing partly cloudy weather conditions across our area here. And there off to the west, we're seeing streaks in the jet stream, the subtropical jet coming in here. And over here is that main jet right now. But let's take a look at the conditions for convection or thunderstorm activity. And for uh, Thursday, uh, potential for some thunder in a large portion of the west southwestern part of the country. And then in the southeast, a slight risk for severe weather in portions of Alabama and southwestern Georgia. Maybe even a rumble of thunder possible in uh, most of uh, central and eastern Georgia. But right now, the odds are very low of any precipitation in the uh, southeastern Georgia and, and, and eastern South Carolina. However, looking into tomorrow, this is Friday, day one, we call this actually day two of the severe weather outlook. A bullseye right over here in the St. Louis area over into a large portion of central uh, Illinois and the western portions of Kentucky, the Paducah area, uh, up into extreme northwest portion of the Tennessee area and the Booth Hill of, uh, uh, of Missouri. Uh, a, a moderate risk as well across uh, a large portion of Mississippi into northwest Alabama. This is for Friday. What about Saturday? Saturday, that system advances eastward 
uh, in southward and a large portion of southern Mississippi into southern Alabama and uh, then a moderate risk over into the western Georgia area, a large part of central and eastern part of Tennessee. And then the slight risk all the way up into the uh, Lake Erie uh, area, uh, into Ohio and western portions of Pennsylvania. And then we have day three, which is going to be Saturday, actually day four. Uh, this is Saturday, and that severe weather threat weakens a little bit, but still there is a threat for severe weather in uh, northern portions of Florida, eastern Georgia. Georgia, just about all of South Carolina, North Carolina, into Virginia and Pennsylvania and New Jersey. All right, let's take a look at the models themselves. And this is, a bit, again, back to the jet stream. We're going to watch this wave that we just saw earlier uh, over here in the western portion of the country. Let's progress this into the future. And that wave propagates eastward and then redevelops as it crosses the mountains into the central and southern plains. And there you can see a very strong trough. We call this a trough of low pressure uh, in the middle and upper portion of the atmosphere. And over here, this is where we are, and I'm more concerned about this. You see how these isobars are, are spreading out or fanning out? There is a rule of thumb for severe weather where you have fanning of the isobars, or in this case, isotax, uh, you're going to see the higher potential for severe weather. Uh, this is for sunrise on Sunday. Let's go into a little bit of Sunday afternoon uh, and into, um, uh, well, this is at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, Sunday afternoon. There we got that. Uh, same event here in southeastern Georgia and eastern South Carolina, the fanning of the isotax or the isobars. And that is an indication that the winds aloft will be uh, suitable for strong lifting of the atmosphere. So it'll be a strong lift uh, going on. And that course produces strong uh, turbulence and strong winds. So there's a high chance for some severe thunderstorms that could develop would develop into straight line winds across our region. All right, let's take a look at the uh, forecast maps here. This is the ECMWF, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast. And uh, it shows that system right now in the west crossing the mountains and then as it crosses the mountain, it starts to begin to redevelop. And over here, this is for uh, the day on Saturday. Um, actually Friday afternoon going into uh, Friday evening into uh, Saturday morning. Uh, this is sunset on Saturday. It shows a line of intense thunderstorms across the Missouri area uh, into the Mississippi River crossing into Iowa and uh, over into Illinois. And progressing forward in time, uh, the system continues to get strong possibility of strong to severe thunderstorms with tornadoes in that area all the way down uh, through the middle into the upper portions of the lower Mississippi River Valley for the threat of severe weather there. All right, let's go forward in time. And going into the day on uh, Saturday, uh, that system redevelops across the southern portion of the country into Mississippi and Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky expecting more heavy rains out there and potential severe weather also into the Alabama area. And then as we progress into uh, Sunday, that system continues to remain rather strong into or early Sunday morning, uh, moving out of Alabama into western and northwestern Georgia and western and uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, and then progresses eastward into the uh, east portions of Georgia and South Carolina. Looking at the time right now, this is sunrise actually on Sunday and then going into Sunday afternoon. There it is right there, moving across into coastal Georgia and South Carolina. All right, let's take a closer look at this with the precipitation totals. And there we're seeing um, uh, rain across all of the uh, south uh, east in the middle portion and the eastern portion of the country, and then the moderate to heavy rains out in the western states. Let's take a, a closer look at that. And uh, first of all, over in California, they're expecting significant rains out of this system there. You can see over an inch to an inch and a half of rain across south a portion of California and around the San Diego area. You don't see too much rain in San Diego, but there it is. And the Los Angeles area up in the Sierra Mountains, that's going to be uh, uh, Sierra Nevada Mountains. That's going to be snow there. And up in northern portions of California, that's going to be moderate to heavy rains out in that region there. All right, let's progress into the southeast United States. That's where I 
my concern here. And it looks like about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter rain associated with this system as it passes eastward. This is as of sunset on Sunday. And uh, over in the um, northwest portions of Alabama, uh, into northeast Miss, uh, Mississippi, they could see anywhere between three to four inches of rain associated with thunderstorms there. And also in the uh, panhandle of Florida, moderate to heavy rains associated with those thunderstorms there. All right, what about, uh, I mentioned Kentucky earlier, and uh, um, there it is right there. Uh, looks like some uh, moderate to heavy rains, an inch to two inches of rain falling across portions of that uh, Commonwealth of Kentucky into Tennessee, and of course then back into Georgia and South Carolina. All right, let's take a look at the amount of snow cover. It's going to be quite extensive across the Sierra Nevada, up into Oregon, Washington, uh, into Montana, in the Rockies. Uh, yeah, they're going to be getting snow up in that area. Um, now, looking at the conditions for uh, the southeast, again, there's that line of showers and thunderstorms moving in uh, on uh, Sunday. Uh, and this is as of uh, 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon, the forecast with the GFS model, the uh, global forecast system, the U.S. model, shows the band of showers and thunderstorms pushing across Georgia and South Carolina. There's a potential for severe weather, straight line damaging winds could be associated with this band of thunderstorms if indeed it does develop. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Well, the big next question is, what about Monday, March the 17th in Savannah, Georgia, particularly downtown Savannah, Georgia, because that is the mega parade, the big parade uh, in Savannah, Georgia. It's been going on since, what, 1843, I think? Maybe slightly before, 1836, maybe? Anyway, uh, the parade will be uh, um, getting ready to go, and during the uh, staging time during the night, the rain should be moving off the coast. Uh, this is at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, there you can see the rain exiting the coast, and then after that, going into uh, sunrise on St. Patrick's Day Monday. The rain is well to the east of us now. Clearing weather conditions move in with light uh, breezy conditions. So let's take a look at that forecast for Savannah, Georgia uh, for St. Patrick's Day. And it looks like we're going to see a mostly sunny day on Monday. Uh, sunrise temperature a little bit on the chilly side, but not too bad. 50 degrees, 71 for the high on Monday. Now during the parade, the parade starts at 10:15 in the morning. So let's go in around 11 o'clock, 57 degrees, and then the parade will be done by around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 68 degrees by then. The winds will be a little bit on just a, bri on a breezy side, 6 to 12 miles per hour. That'll get the flags ruffling for all the flag carriers, uh, which will get, you know, that, that looks pretty good when those flags are uh, a ruffling lightly in, in the breeze. So things are looking great for St. Patrick's Day. Now, looking at the uh, continuation of the forecast, my website, savannapat.name. And uh, scrolling on down, there's the fair to partly cloudy weather conditions uh, for today and tomorrow, Saturday. Now, there's an 80% probability of showers and thunderstorms on Sunday. Well, we just saw that. And then clearing off on Monday, fair weather and Tuesday. And Wednesday, temperatures in the 70s to upper 70s at that. And beyond that, the my extended outlook, the not a forecast, it's an outlook, uh, for the next six weeks is calling for temperatures to be uh, around normal to slightly above normal. Uh, and normal high for this time of the year now is in the low to middle 70s, lows in the lower 50s. And this looks great for gardening uh, conditions. And if you want to know more about the heavenly backyard garden, I have a video right here that I shot just the other day planting tomatoes and potatoes and uh, cucumbers in the heavenly backyard garden. So take a look at that and uh, enjoy the weekend. Watch out for those thunderstorms on Saturday, on Sunday, Saturday off to the west, and then enjoy the St. Patrick's Day festivities in Savannah, Georgia. See ya.